Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Josh Does Coding. In today's video, we are going to be continuing on with our wave-based survival series, and we will be specifically continuing with the enemy spawning portion of it. So let's jump straight on into it. If we open up our enemy spawner that we created in the last video, we have our basic logic to spawn enemies here. However, it is just going to spawn endlessly. There's no waves. It's just an endless amount of enemies. So today we are going to go ahead and set up the logic to actually make waves. So essentially what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a maximum amount of enemies in a wave. We will then wait for the player to kill all of those enemies. We will then have a delay before the next round starts. And then we'll start the next round and repeat that cycle. So, the first thing we need to do is limit how many enemies can spawn in this wave. In order to do that, what we're actually going to do is we're going to keep track of this in the game mode. So if we come to our content browser, if we come to game, if we come to blueprints, come to core, we will find our third person game mode. So, we haven't touched this yet, so it is going to be completely blank, and that is okay. What we're going to do is we're going to add a variable, and we're going to call this max enemies in wave. And we're going to make this an integer. Now, the reason we're doing this in the game mode instead of the enemy spawner is simply because the game mode is responsible for keeping track of the current state of the game. And the way I view it is that we're going to have to have logic in both the enemies and the spawner itself in order to track what's going on with the wave. So I think holding it within the game mode is an appropriate thing to do. So we have max enemies and wave. We can set this default value to, let's say, 10. You can set this to whatever you want. Then what we're going to do is come back over to our enemy spawner. And we are going to break this link on begin play. And instead, we're going to move this code down. And we are going to create a custom event. And we are going to call this start wave and we can just hook this up like so now what we need to do is implement that value that we just created in the game mode so up here on begin play we can call get game mode we can then cast this to bp underscore third person game mode which is our game mode. Then we can right click on the output and promote it to a variable. And we'll just call this BP third person game mode. The next thing we'll want to do is on the set timer by events, we have this return value. We are going to also want to promote this to a variable and we'll call this spawn enemy timer handle. The reason we're doing this is because we will want to cancel this timer when we reach the maximum amount of enemy spawned. So, what we can do is actually start tracking how many enemies have been spawned. So one more thing we're going to have to do if we come back to the game mode is create another variable and we'll call it We'll call it amount of enemies spawned this wave. Then back in our spawn manager, we can get the reference we created to our game mode. And I actually have a space at the start of the name here, which is going to get fixed. And I'm going to call this from here. I'm going to get current or get amount of enemy spawn this wave and we are going to increment 
that number, which essentially just means increasing it by one. We are then going to check if this is greater than or equal to the max enemies in wave. If it is, what we're going to do is we are going to grab the reference to our timer handle and we are going to call clear and invalidate timer by handle. So essentially, once we spawn this enemy, if it's at the max amount of enemies in this wave, we are going to cancel this timer so we don't spawn any future enemies. Cool, so this will work. We are no longer spawning enemies past our cap, but how do we actually start the next wave? Well, what we can do is once we have cleared this timer, we can call a function to start the countdown to the next round. And we'll handle that in the third person game mode. So we can create a custom event and we'll call this start, uh, start delay until next round. And what we'll do here is we'll just set a timer by event. We will hook up a, another custom event and we'll call this start next round. Then in this timer by event, we can set how long it's going to be. So I'll promote that to a variable. I'll call this time between rounds. And we'll say that by default, there is 10 seconds in between rounds. So if we come back to our enemy spawn manager, we can then get our third person game mode. We can call start delay until next round. Perfect. So now our game mode is going to be tracking the time in between the waves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a reference to our enemy spawn manager. So what we're going to do is we're going to do events begin play we are going to get actor of class and we'll get it to be bp enemy spawn manager we'll go ahead and promote this to a variable and we'll call us enemy spawn manager what we can do now is in to start next round, we'll get our enemy spawn manager and we'll start wave. Cool. So we're now able to track the max enemies in a wave. If the wave is at the max enemies, we will stop spawning enemies and then we'll start delaying until the next round. But this is flawed because we're going to start the delay to the next round while there's still enemies alive. We don't want that. So what we need to do is come back to our content browser, open up our base enemy class. What we're going to say is when an enemy dies, we want to lower the amount of current enemies in this wave. Or what we can do better is just track how many enemies have been killed this wave. So to do that, we're going to come over to our game mode. We're going to create a new variable and we'll call it enemies killed this wave. 
we can just compile and save that. Come back over to our enemy. In begin play, we are once again going to have to get game mode. We're going to cast to the third person game mode. And we will promote it to a variable. Just like so. Then, in our take damage events, if we have less than zero health, or we have zero health, we can get our game mode. We can get enemies killed this wave. And we can go ahead and increment this integer. So we'll just do plus plus. And then we will destroy the actor just like before. Cool. So currently we start this delay until next round. If right when we finish killing the amount of enemies that we are sorry, we start the day to the next round as soon as we spawn the max enemies. We don't want that. So we're actually just going to delete this note here. We do still want to clear this timer handle. And then what we'll do is create a new function in our game mode or a new event in our game mode. So we'll create a custom event and we'll call this check if wave is finished. And what we'll do in here is simply get the max enemies in wave. And we'll check if the amount of enemy spawn this wave is greater than or equal to max enemies in wave. If true, so if we spawn the max enemies we can, we will then check if enemies killed this wave is greater than or equal to the max enemies in wave. And what we can actually do just to make this cleaner instead of adding two branches is we'll just actually add in a and boolean. We'll hook this up to the branch. So now we're checking if we spawned as many enemies as we can, and we're checking if we've killed as many enemies as we can. If true, we are going to start the delay until next round. So let's just get an overview of what we just did one last time. Now we spawn in an enemy, we increase the amount of enemies we spawn this wave, and we check if it is the max enemies we can spawn. If it is, we are going to stop spawning enemies. We also now track how many enemies we've killed this wave. If we have spawned the max enemies we can, and we have killed all of those enemies, we will start a delay until the next round. We will then wait 10 seconds and start the next wave. Now, before we start the next wave, the one last thing we need to do is reset all our values. So the amount of enemies spawn this wave will be zero as we're starting a new wave. The enemies killed this wave will be zero as we're starting a new wave. And now we need to figure out what the max enemies in this wave is. Well, the way I'm going to handle this is simply to multiply it by the current wave. So to do that, we need to create yet another variable, and we'll call this current wave. If we compile, we can set the default value to 1. And what we can do is increment this here before we start the next wave. So we'll say plus plus. And then we'll say max enemies in wave. If we drag out, we can set this. We'll say it is going to be max enemies in wave times the current wave. Now in the future, what we can do is transfer this to a float so that we can do, say, 1.1 instead of just doing 
current wave times two. But currently, we'll keep it simple. We'll be making this more advanced in the future. So for now, we're just going to say, essentially every wave, 10 more enemies will spawn in. We will then set the max enemies for the wave, and we can start the wave. Okay, sorry about that quick edit. There's one thing I forgot we needed to do. If we open up our base enemy, after we kill the enemy, we also, from the third person game mode, actually need to call check if wave is finished. Just like so. And one last thing I forgot, we also need to come to our enemy spawner. And we need to enable no collision fail. You want to add this checkbox here. Essentially, this is going to make it so that the enemy will always spawn in, even if it's slightly overlapping something. So for example, if an enemy is slightly overlapping this ramp, we still want it to spawn in. And even if it's when you get to higher waves, if it's slightly overlapping another enemy, we will still want it to spawn. So now we can go ahead and run our game. So the wave will start. We will get all our 10 enemies. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and the last one, 10. There'll now be a 10 second delay before more enemies start to spawn. Once that 10 second delay is over, we'll see that enemies begin to spawn in again. And this time there will be a max of 20. So we got four, we got five, six, seven, eight, nine. got 10 they're still coming so you can see the limit is increased up to 20 and this will go on and on forever so that's going to do it for today's video in the next video we are going to be refining this slightly more so like i mentioned we will give ourselves a bit more control so that instead of spawning double the enemies every wave we can spawn say 1.2 times the enemy every wave we're also going to be creating ui to track how many enemies are left in the wave as well as the current wave. If you want to see that video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions on how I can improve these videos going forward. With that said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and good luck with your games.